So my previous video was talking about the fact that um, energy can in some ways behave like particles, which are things that have mass, and then in other ways behave like waves, which is kind of, at this stage, sort of an abstract, kind of weird, funky thing. And uh, it's something to wrap our, uh, that's difficult to wrap our brains around at, at this point. But, uh, one thing that's very interesting about the de Broglie relationship is that de Broglie claimed, and then set up a, a mathematical equation that could uh, interrelate the two, that even things that have a mass, uh, regardless of size, can have wave-like properties. Uh, the de Broglie relationship is, of course, this equation right here, that wavelength of any object with mass is equal to Planck's constant, divided by the mass of that object multiplied by its velocity. Now Planck's constant is a very, very tiny number. You'll remember that it's 6 point, uh, sorry, 626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. Now if you uh, put in any number m, a mass, right there, that's significant, like the mass of something you would interact with, such as a golf ball or something uh, in, uh, in kilograms, for instance. That number is going to be huge compared to this number, which is tiny. It's 10 to the negative 34. Even if you've got a, a really good velocity, like a, you know, a thousand miles or, or 10,000 mile meters per second or something like that, this number is still going to come, come out to be so, so tiny that wavelength is going to be virtually insignificant and unobservable for any uh, object that's large enough that you could actually measure its mass and hold it in your hand or something like that. Which is why we don't see things with our eyes that, that behave in the, this kind of weird sci-fi wave-like uh, uh, manner. Anyway, so the point is this. Uh, in this problem, um, we're asked to calculate, the, or to use this equation, the de Broglie relationship, to determine the wavelengths of the falling objects in uh, part A, it says an 85 kilogram person, and so I'll write that down as mass, traveling at a velocity of uh, 50 kilometers per hour. So velocity is 50 kilometers uh, per hour. Yeah, the trick of doing all of this is that we want to make sure that all of our units match. Velocity, I'm going to have to convert to, uh, I, I've got it in kilometers per hour. I don't have hours up here in this de Broglie relationship up here in Planck's constant, it's seconds. So I'm going to have to make a, a, a count for that. I'm also going to probably want to convert kilometers to meters because meters are the base SI units for uh, length. So I've got 50 kilometers in uh, one hour and this is one of those circumstances in which I'm starting out with a value that has denominator units. I want to convert it into meters per second and the reason is because those are the base units uh, for, uh, for the SI system. So uh, I'm going to want to put kilometers here in the denominator. Can I directly relate that in some way to meters? Absolutely. Can I directly relate hours to seconds? I think I probably can if I do some somersaults in my brain. Meters and kilometers, how do they relate? Well, if I've got one kilometer which is long, there are 1,000 meters in it. The kilometers kill each other. I'm left with meters. It takes me toward my answer. Uh, in one hour... How many seconds do I have? Well, there are 60 seconds in a minute. There are 60 minutes an hour, so 60 times 60 is uh, 3,600, I think. So there are 3,600 seconds in one hour. The uh, hour is going to cancel out this hour down here. And as I throw that into my calculator, I end up discovering that um, the velocity that this person is traveling at meters per second uh, ends up being 13.89 meters per second. Now, I realize that this doesn't have the proper number of significant figures based on the values I've been given at the beginning. I usually don't end up adjusting for significant figure numbers until I get to the very, very end of uh, my problem. So this is the velocity the person is traveling at. Now I can go ahead and uh, calculate out my wavelength. <clears throat> wavelength, once again, is equal to Planck's constant, which is 6.626 uh, times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds divided by the mass. And the mass of this uh, person is 85 kilograms. Now I can keep that in kilograms because kilograms... This is strange, but in the SI system for units, kilograms is actually considered the base unit, even though it has a kilo in front of it. You, normally you'd be tempted to think, well, it's got to be grams, right? Everything that's a base unit doesn't have a kilo or a milla or a micro or a mega or something in front of it. In the SI system, kilograms is the one exception. So mass, we keep in kilograms. I'll go ahead and throw this guy down. The velocity is 13.89 meters per second. You'll notice that my seconds, that's in the denominator of the de denominator, 
having seconds in the denominator of the denominator is, uh, as far as algebra is concerned, is like having it in the numerator. <clears throat> what that really means is that if I, if I multiply just unit-wise to just for units, uh, the denominator by, uh, by, sorry, by seconds and the numerator by seconds, my seconds cancel each other out and I actually end up getting unit-wise, my final units end up being, sorry, I'll take them down here, joules times uh, seconds squared in the numerator, uh, and in the denominator I end up getting meters times kilograms. The final numerical answer I end up getting is 5.61 times 10 to the 37th. Joules times seconds squared divided by kilogram meters. And once again, you might look at that and think, that, that doesn't make sense because it's asking for a wavelength. I'm supposed to end up with meters. Once again, this doesn't look like the right units. However, there's sort of a, something I have to, a detail I have to show you. And, and that is that a joule, if you actually look it up, is, is uh, one of those units that's a combination of uh, a couple of different units. If you look one, up one joule, one joule is actually equal to one kilogram meter squared per second squared. That's what a joule actually is. So if I take this joule right here and I replace it with a kilogram meter squared per second squared, then you can clearly see the kilograms uh, cancel each other out, the seconds squared cancel each other out, and this meter in the denominator cancel out one, cancels out one of the meters in the numerator. So indeed I end up getting a final answer uh, with the units of meters, 5.61 times 10 to the negative 37 meters. That is the wavelength that a person uh, of this weight skiing at that velocity would have. That wavelength is so tiny, that it's such a tiny, tiny number that um, you're not going to be able to observe any wave-like properties from a, an actual person of physical mass. Um, now, now that we've looked at that, <clears throat> in problems B and C that I just uh, uh, talked about in this uh, previous video, there are two different objects. One is a, a bullet whose mass is 10 grams and whose velocity is equal to 250 meters per second. And the second one is going to be a lithium atom, which is, so I'm going to write down a lithium atom, uh, which, whose uh, velocity is going to be equal to 2.5 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. Now, in order to do these problems, you're going to do the exact same approach. A couple things you need to keep in mind is you have to convert to SI units. So convert these 10 grams into kilograms. And the reason is because uh, at the end, you'll you'll be allowed to uh, cancel out the uh, joules values as being kilogram meter squared per second squared. You have to keep the kilograms and kilograms so they cancel each other out. Otherwise, you can do everything else the same with this problem and uh, just plug and chug into that equation. You should get the wavelength, no problem. Now, the trick with the lithium atom is to figure out its mass because it's not given to you. A lithium atom, if you look at the periodic table, um, it has an atomic mass of uh, <clears throat> 6... Sorry, 6.94. What that means is that if you had a mole of lithium atoms, you'd have 6.94 grams. So 6.94 grams in one mole of lithium. We're trying to figure out what the mass is of an individual lithium atom. So an individual lithium atom, lithium atom if I had one mole of lithium atoms, uh, I would have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. I really need to make that bigger. Lithium atoms. You'll notice that the moles of lithium cancel each other out, and that uh, tells me, well, I'm going to go ahead and jump the gun and convert to my SI units. I've got grams in the denominator and kilograms in the numerator. One uh, kilogram contains 1,000 grams. So if I plug and chug with this, it should tell me how many kilograms an individual lithium atom weighs. I hope that makes sense, because I'm left with kilograms in the numerator, lithium atoms in the denominator. So uh, throwing that all in, uh, I actually end up determining that the mass of an individual lithium atom is 1.15 times 10 to the negative 26th. And that's the mass of an individual lithium atom. You can then throw that into this same equation. It's already given your velocity with the proper units, and you can determine the wavelength of an individual lithium atom. You can, you'll, you'll be able to see that the answer to that is going to be a much larger number than the answers to either parts A or parts B, because you're talking about such a small particle, a lithium atom. I'll let you go ahead and do those on your own. Have a good day.